Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to make a plaque for a deer skull, and I'm going to have the X-carve here cut one out at the same time. We're going to set this up as a race so we can see which way is faster. So let's get after it. Before getting the race started, I needed to do a little prep work to make sure we would have a fair fight. I used fabric-backed double-sided carpet tape to make the workpiece stick to the bed of the X-carve, as well as sticking the templates to the workpiece that I would be cutting out by hand. I wanted this race to be about cutting out identical parts for the same project, and since I couldn't swap bits on the X-carve while I was supposed to be cutting out my own components, I cut a keyhole ahead of time. You'll see later on how I cut the keyhole into the other piece. With the toolpath ready to go and my workpiece staged on the bandsaw, I hit start and lingered a bit with my hand hovering over the oh crap button to make sure that the carve started without issue. Then I hurried over to the bandsaw and started cutting. First I split the board into three pieces to make things more manageable, then went back around each component. The goal here was to get as close as I could without making contact with the templates. The flush trim bit I'll use in the next step can eat up quite a bit of material, but the less it has to chew through, the better the surface finish is, so a sixteenth or less of overhang is ideal. At the router table, I started with the template facing up and riding along the top bearing. I only do half of the two big pieces in this orientation because when I reach the bottom and come back, the grain switches directions and instead of carving into the wood, it's carving away, and the blades can catch and split the whole piece in half if you're not careful. How do you suppose I figured that out? Next, I raise the bit up, put the template face down, and finish the carve using the bottom bearing, which goes by pretty fast. I never bothered to look at the X-carve during the race, but it looks like I'm a fair bit ahead at this point. I used the pre-drilled holes in my templates to guide my drill bit through the walnut in the correct locations. At the top of this piece, there will be a dowel for the skull to hang from, so I just drill a shallow hole to locate the center for a larger hole later on. At this point, I'm done with the templates, so it's time to pull the pieces apart. Normally I just slide a small trowel in between and twist, then the whole works just pops apart. I just picked up a new roll of tape for this project, and holy smokes, they must have changed the formula on their sticky stuff, because this was a battle. Lesson learned, next time I'll use smaller pieces of tape. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole at the spot I located earlier, then I just had to peel off the extra sticky tape to finish the job and the race was over. Well, the project's not over yet, but that does it for the race portion, and it did not turn out like I expected. I thought it was going to be all I could do to keep up with the machine, uh, but the machine didn't know it was in a race. So I rushed through the bandsaw portion, and I took my time on the router because that tool is a little bit scarier sometimes. Um, but I did beat it fairly quickly. I was about 10 minutes faster. We had 16 minutes on the hand done by me and 26 minutes on the CNC machine. But the things that we learned in this are, first of all, look at the giant mess I made. I had to pick up all these pieces off the ground and under the workbench and stuff, just slinging them off of the bandsaw. The CNC machine leaves a much tidier firewood pile or lots and lots of leftover chunks I can use for other things, maybe pen turning, maybe whatever. Um, the other big thing of note is that when it came time to separating my uh, hand cut ones from the blanks, the glue held, or the double sided tape held much harder than I expected it to than the stuff that I used to use. And I ended up cutting myself on a sharp edge of the wood just trying to separate the truth. So now that I've got blood all over every one of these pieces, I'm going to have to sand that back off. So that's going to count against my time a little bit. But when all is said and done, I've got two perfectly good blanks done within 10 minutes of each other. But the most interesting note is that my brother's behind the camera right now, and he pointed out to me that he could have hit start on the robot, walked inside and made himself a drink, and sat there and enjoyed himself while his work was getting done, and I was still out here breathing sawdust and cutting myself. So, to each their own, there's two ways to do it. I am shocked that I beat it but it's also because I knew it was a race and I went a little bit faster. So anyway, I've got a bit of a mess to clean up from both sides and then we're gonna finish building the project. I added a small round over to all the outward facing edges while I still had the router table set up. Now for the keyhole on the second piece, I drilled a deep 3 8 inch hole using another position that I located while the templates were still in place. I drew a line down the center of the board then clamped a small fence two inches away from it. This is the distance from the center of the bit to the edge of the base on my trim router. 
I lowered the bit into the hole, turned the router on, and pushed it forward until I reached the second indicator hole. The middle piece needs holes in the ends in order to attach everything together, and keeping the holes correctly spaced and in vertical alignment is important, otherwise the plaque will come out all wonky. I used to do this using a simple jig I made out of some MDF. It works, but there's still some margin for error. I used the X-Carve to make an improved jig with two pockets that fit the front and back ends of this piece very snugly. Now the piece can't tilt or twist, and the results are way more consistent. I added a countersink to the screw holes, then did some quick sanding to clean up the faces and get rid of those pesky blood stains. I wiped on some tongue oil, then glued in a short dowel and put the whole works together. Now the cool thing about this design is that if you take the faceplate off and you rotate it 180 degrees, you can go from a wall style plaque to a pedestal style plaque. And if you want to make one for yourself, I've got very simple scale drawings available. And if you happen to have an X-Carve, I've got the easel file available as well. And both of those are linked down in the description. I want to say a big thank you to Inventables for helping me out with this project. You should definitely go check them out and get an X-Carve for yourself. They're linked down below as well. And that's about it. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time.